Good morning. Welcome to TheEnclosure.ca. Some of my regular visitors to uh, my YouTube channel and my, uh, my website have asked that I do some more videos. Um, so I thought it would be an excellent opportunity to talk about the, uh, the knowledge I've gained from uh, going to seminars and through uh, individuals like David Hill from uh, Enoretti. Um, on the best practices for sealing both forced air and ventilation ducting and why it's so important to seal all of the joints in the ventilation ducting. So what I've done is I've pre-charged this uh, assembly that I'm getting ready to seal off with some uh, theatrical smoke and I am going to show you uh, how that comes out pretty much every orifice. So I'm going to apply some air here, and you see it's coming out here, it's coming out here, it's coming out in the gores, the joint here. Uh, you can't see it on your side, but it's coming along a, a seam on this side. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to start sealing up the individual components and show how important the rest of the components still are. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video while I do some of the sealing. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is uh, the, the main joints and then show what's coming out of the gores and the long seams. A lot of people will do the joints, but they don't do the gores. And the gores actually represent a lot of air leakage. And obviously you want the system, the pipes are meant to put the air where you've designed the air to go. And if you're either sucking air from other places or pushing air to other places than you intend, you're not getting a system that's going to be comfortable, energy efficient, uh, you can get whistling, uh, you'll have contamination smells like uh, bathroom smells and kitchen smells that are not being evacuated because there's just not enough air moving to the intended target. Okay, so I'm going to pause you for a bit and uh, when we come back we'll have this recharged with smoke and see what the difference uh, is after the main seams have been sealed. Okay, now that I've sealed up the main, uh, what I call the, the main connections, um, I'm gonna, I've recharged the pipe and, uh, with theatrical smoke and we'll see uh, what it looks like. So now I'm going to place a little air pressure to push the smoke out and you can see it's just billowing out of the gorse both out of the, uh, the adjustable portion of the gores as well as where there's a seam where they uh, uh, make, make the circle out of a uh, flat stock and there's a seam here. So you can see it's just billowing out of there. Um, also out of this gore. Not as much out of the, uh, the long uh, longitudinal seam of the main uh, duct. Uh, there is some coming out of here, but because the, uh, the pressure uh, is building up or, or can't build up, it's so leaky at the gores, it's not yet to, uh, enough pressure to push out of the longitudinal seams. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now tape up some of the gores and uh, show you the difference it makes. Okay, I've now sealed up... Uh, pretty much uh, the majority of the gores I've left uh, a longitudinal seam here. I've also left, and you'll see it uh, here, and it's already starting to smoke out. I've left a section on the top end of the gores of that one elbow. And this is to simulate pretty much standard practice in the industry, which is to install the ducts and then seal them. And anybody who's ever done that knows very well that there is a portion of most of the ducts, most of the elbows, that you cannot get to once it's already installed. And I wanted to simulate uh, that, ins that installation and what, it in what uh, the results are for airflow. So again, we're going to add a little bit of... Uh, uh, of airflow and I'm, I'm somewhere between 7 and 10 psi, not, uh, not very much. And you'll just see, oops, you'll see the smoke just billowing out of 
the top end of that unsealed. And it represents a very small percentage of the overall uh, duct seams. But as you can see, uh, it uh, represents a huge air leak. And uh, over the lifespan of, of the system operating, that's going to represent uh, a big air loss, uh, a lot of uh, lost opportunity for energy efficiency. Um, again, it can be so severe that you will fail your duct blaster test. Uh, you will not have sufficient airflow to or from specific zones uh, because it just can't get to where it's supposed to be because it's leaking out of locations like this. So, uh, the best practice, and it is certainly something that is encouraged and almost, well, it's made a requirement by individuals like David Hill when he was selling his uh, NRAD uh, HRVs, was that you had to seal as you go. Now, somebody inexperienced like me, uh, I wasn't confident in my ability to run the ducts where I wanted to run them. So I put the whole system up first, then I used uh, the tape to basically um, lock in the, the, the gores. I would just put a small piece of tape over each of the gores so that I locked it into the right angle. I put screws in at the main joints and then I took it down in assemblies like this that are now really easy to seal and I know that I can get to all sides of this particular joint when I put it back together. And I've planned the system so that I can basically take it apart in huge pieces. And I'll, I'll uh, have a link on uh, the bottom of this video to my journal entry where I'll talk more about this. But I had some pieces that were uh, about 15 feet long and had multiple branches off them, multiple elbows off them. And I was able to seal that complete assembly in the convenience of being on my workbench and then put it up and only have to seal each end kind of thing. So I'm now going to go through and seal off these gores and uh, uh, we'll charge the, uh, the duct once more with uh, theatrical smoke and then I'll show the leakage that happens along the longitudinal seam. So this time I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Um, I like to use, so first of all, duct tape, which is that cloth-based stuff you buy at hardware stores, is actually not meant for ducts. It's, uh, it's a utility tape meant for anything but ducts that uh, have to be airtight. The, the cloth uh, deteriorates and the tape will literally fall off the duct in one or two years. So most, most pros are using some form of foil-based, uh, heavily adhesive tape. I'm using uh, this Nashua product. It's multi-purpose foil tape, 322 HVAC. And it's funny, I got this at a, uh, at a um, wholesaler, uh, an HVAC uh, wholesaler. And I also got some, it, was a slightly different label, but it still said 322 HVAC Nashua multi-purpose tape from a big box store. And there was a definite difference in the thickness of the foil or the mylar uh, coating. Uh, this stuff being much thicker. Uh, so, I also like to use, now this you can see has been used a lot. This is worn down just because of the amount that I've been using it. So what I do is I take off uh, however much I think I need. In this case, I'm just doing small pieces. Get it centered over the joint. And then I use this to press it down and seal against the duct. And I'm able to get a much better job than if I was to do this with just my fingers. And later on, I'll show you how little a, a, a leak it takes. Uh, some of my uh, tuck tape that's just there to provide a blocking for the, the air pressure uh, for this test. 
uh, is leaking and it's very, very small uh, uh, fissures in the tape uh, seams. So by doing this, I'm getting a really nice adhesion to the duct, a good uh, airtight seal. Now hopefully we'll have enough uh, uh, charge of the uh, theatrical smoke still inside. If not, then I'll uh, pause the video and, uh, and come back. That is now sealed. We'll put some more air into here and let's see what we come up with. So, as I said, you'll see there's very small holes there, but uh, it's coming out of the, uh, the, the uh, tape uh, end barrier I put there, so I'll just try to address that. Do the trick. Give her a test. <laughs> oh, it doesn't. It shows uh, <laughs> just shows why you don't use uh, uh, tuck tape for. Uh, HVAC uh, sealing. It's not, <laughs> and quite frankly, I don't use it for uh, any type of air sealing. I don't believe in an interior uh, air barrier approach. Uh, I do my air barrier on the outside of the building using a self tiered uh, membrane. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, without without any uh, air pressure at all, I'm still getting. Actually, I can't even find where there's a hole there, and I don't, it's just coming through the seams. Anyway, I'm going to ignore that for now and see if we can see any place else that the smoke coming out of. And you might be able to just barely see a little bit coming out of here, and that's a fairly good quality tape joint. Uh, but again, you can see that there is uh, there's some uh, leakage coming out of there. And that is why the consultant that I am working with recommends that not only do you tape, but you also put hard cast, some sort of duct seal mask. I'm using... Uh, Hardcast uh, 321. It has uh, embedded fibers for, uh, um, I believe it has embedded fibers for uh, extra strength. But what I found is that with the tape alone, any type of movement will often rip the tape. With the duct seal alone, any type of movement when it's wet will obviously open it up, but when it's dry, it'll crack. And again, there will be a, uh, a large air gap there. But when you combine the two products and you put duct seal over top of the tape and onto the metal on each side of the tape, the assembly is super strong. And then in, in some high torque situations, like I'll show you later, when sealing up a branch, and I find that this area here is really vulnerable to opening up, I like to then also embed some of this and it's, it's drywall tape which I'd never use for drywall because it doesn't make a very good uh, seam for a drywall uh, uh, joint uh, use the paper based stuff but this makes a great seam when let's say there's going to be a lot of torque on there for some reason and yes I am going to be screwing it but if I'm, I'm assembling it in big pieces and I know that as I lift it just the weight of it is going to put torque on something I will embed this into the mastic and I'll show you that later on. Okay, so that is uh, basically it. Shows why it's so important to uh, 
seal your ducts. You want your air to go where it's planned to go and not uh, just by accident uh, going wherever it feels like it. Um, and it doesn't take uh, it doesn't take a very large hole for there to be a large uh, movement of air out of uh, an unsealed joint. So the practice of not sealing as you go and sealing after it's complete and not being able to reach that top side uh, just isn't going to cut it with uh, a high performance uh, system. Okay, that's uh, it for now. I'm going to come back a little later as we uh, demonstrate sealing up a uh, Y. Thanks.